So what are you playing in standard? Brad Nelson's GP list. The one we're not supposed to talk about? Yeah. It's a good one. I'm playing Battle Wits. Why? I mean, because the man is too good. He got 20, 20 duels, 20 guild gates, 20 key runes, far seek, chromatic lantern. Is it any good? It's fine. I mean, you know, well, you know what they say. If you got a big deck, you got a big. Hey, we're rolling. Hi, this is Magic the Newsening. You're home for fair, balanced, and counterbalanced reporting, and your number one source for Magic News. I'm Ruben Bressler, and these are our top eight stories. Grand Prix Middle Earth in Auckland was given to television detective Walker McMurdo, who piloted Four Color Reanimator, or Frights, to the top. The deck included a lot of carefully chosen singleton targets for unburial rights, including Craterhoof Behemoth better known to his fans as Hashtag Hoof, and even better known as Jabba the Hutt's Invitational Card. Moving to modern, Grand Prix Lyon was won by art house critic Jeremy Dezani with Jund. This is Jeremy's second career GP Top 8 in France, the first coming at GP Paris in 2009, giving him more wins in France than France. Grand Prix Chicago was earned by high school musical stunt double Jacob Wilson with Spirit Jund, who defeated Channel Fireball's second most accomplished hyphensman Josh Utter Layton in the finals, playing a 74 card mirror match. Josh played one basic planes while Jacob played a second swamp, so expect a big price shift for planes in the coming weeks. The real difference in Jacob's deck was the addition of Lingering Souls over either of the more conventional on color choices Kitchen Finks or Giralf's Messenger, proving that the format is doing just fine without Wasteland to keep greedy mana bases in check. In Open Series news, the Standard Open in St. Louis was awarded to SCG Open Grinder and notable bad guy henchman Ryan Forsberg, who put his name in lights with Blue White Red Midrange, or according to my deck nickname update charts, Hell's Angels. Ryan's major innovation was that he added a Slayer's Stronghold to his list to add potency to late game geists, make Snapcaster Mage a reasonable clock all on its own, and make me wish I had instead named the deck Bane Slayer Angels. In the Legacy Open that weekend, fabled Tennessee mountain man Kendall Guthrie won with Rug Delver, and as you can see, he could barely stifle his excitement. But he could wasteland it. Do the right thing, wizards. The following weekend at the StarCityGames.com Open in Dallas-Fort Worth, the lone star at the end was another SCG Open grinder and Denny's 2468 menu item Shane Ramelt, who took Blue-White Flash to the top slot. So, for a nice change of pace from the last few years, a blue-white tempo strategy is the best deck in standard. For those of you wondering, the deck is called Blue-White Flash, not for the banned Mirage Instant, but because trenchcoat enthusiast Adam Prozac, shall we say, exposed the deck to the public. The Legacy Open in Fort Worth was collected by SCG New Orleans Legacy runner-up and cartoon character enthusiast Joe Bass, who won the trophy with Blue White Red Miracles. So congratulations to him. We here at Star City Games wish him good luck and hope he has a safe trip back upstream for the winter. Moving on, Dragon's Maze has been announced as the third set in the Return to Ravnica block. It will be released in May and feature 156 cards, all of them with better names than the set itself. Hopefully. And since the newsening is hugely in favor of anything labyrinthian, David Bowie related or otherwise, it's time to present a clip from this week's real world Ravnica. This is the story of several points. I don't even want to do this. Who come to Ravnica and find out what it's like when people stop being polite and start being real. the couch cushions. I don't know. Did you build a couch fort? It's a maze. It looks like a fort to me. Maze. Uh, makes sense. That's why you're not allowed in. Some of the wizards who work at the coast have announced that just in time for the holidays, a Magic the Gathering holiday gift box will be available for purchase. For 20 bucks, you or your loved ones can receive four Return to Ravnica booster packs, a large card box, 
six illustrated plastic dividers, some stickers, and an alternate art drag mangler. Because nothing says Merry Christmas like zombie plants. Also stickers, am I right, you guys? Huh? Right? The Soren vs. Tibalt dual deck was confirmed for a March 2013 release date. The dual decks will allow players to battle each other with either the Tibalt or Soren deck in a game of magic unlike any other, because Tibalt will be borderline playable. Star City Games recently announced a new site redesign, perhaps you've heard. The speculation surrounding the announcement led to the third highest trending topic in the Roanoke area for a short time last week, falling just in behind hashtags Tuesday Night Bingo and God Speaks to Us All and presumably just in front of Do I Hear Banjos and I Heart Bath Salts. And finally, recently the hashtag MTG has had a border dispute with marrying the game, similar to recent battles in which Magic lost hashtag rights to Twitter commodities MTGOP to Montana Republicans and GPSA to an urban dictionary term. The show is an upcoming VH1 reality show starring West Coast rapper The Game and his wife and the trials and tribulations they face. And spoiler alert, you just lost it. Well, that's all the news for this week. I'm Ruben Bressler, and remember, don't feed the trolls. Hi, I'm Brian Bronduin, and this is Magic the Newsening. You're home for puns and <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> that was definitely going at the end. <laughs> <laughs> was the sound on? Yes. Nice. <laughs> You're home for puns <laughs> 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 Oh, God. Now I have to...